and our Redeemer. Amen. So, this Advent, we are preparing the Royal Highway, and tonight is a highway under construction. So my questions, because we'll always have more questions than we have answers. How does a valley get lifted up and how does a mountain be made low? Everything will be made flat. And we are the ones that are supposed to do that. Right? Isaiah says, the voice of one cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight paths in the desert and a highway for our God. And every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain shall, and hill shall be made low. And an even ground shall become level and rough places a plain. So how do we do that? Hard work. That's not the answer? What is the answer then? (laughs) It's just that valleys brought up, love is lowered, no. It's something else that's referring to. The love of God, a lot of earth movers. A lot of earth movers. A lot of back What is the big picture? What is the big picture? First, that's the one. Yes. What? Treat all people the same. Treat other people. Compassion. Those of you who were here earlier today, right? Compassion. But I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to respect those who labor among you and have charge of you and the Lord and admonish you. Esteem them very highly in love because of their work and be at peace among yourselves. And we urge you, beloved, to admonish the idlers, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all of them. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Never repay evil for evil and always seek to do good to all. Be compassionate. Who said that? You weren't even here today. That's impressive. Be compassionate, right? And here's the kicker. These are the three main verses. For those of you that want to find them in your Bibles, it's first that you have Bibles. Who has a Bible? Kurt does on his phone. Right? You're allowed to have Bibles on your phone. Some of the confirmation kids probably have Bibles, right? If you want to find this in your Bibles, it's First Thessalonians chapter five, verses starting at verse 16. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. That's easy, right? Here's the kicker to these things, which we don't really get in the English. Rejoice always. What is that? How do you rejoice always? I'm old and half deaf. Find something to be grateful for. You can always find something. That's true. Even in the midst of terrible sadness. But there is going to be always sadness. There will always be sadness. But you can something, make something good come out of whatever it is. Pray without ceasing. Is that even possible? What does it mean to pray? Talking to God. And how do you do that? With your hands folded in a closet? Well, you can, but you don't have to. So is this prayer? Give thanks in all circumstances. Right? That's that find something to be thankful for even in the darkest of times. But here's the kicker. I keep saying that, don't I? I haven't actually got it's to keep your attention. It's that it's that to keep your attention, right? Who here's no knows who here knows about different tenses of verbs in English? 
What if I told you that rejoice, pray, and give thanks are in the imperative? What does that mean? You're told to do something, and is it an option? When something is in the imperative case, it is a command, and there is no option not to do it. This is, you will rejoice always. You will pray without ceasing. You will give thanks in all circumstances. You will. Here's the other thing that's lost in translation, the second part of the kicker. In English, we have the word you, which means you, and it means you. No, I didn't say y'all, because that's different. That's Texas, for y'all is singular, and all y'all is plural, right? So, is this y'all rejoice, or is it all y'all rejoice? Are you sure? No, it's not both, it's one or the other. It actually is one or the other. And it actually is plural. Every one of these is plural. Paul is not saying this to the individual Thessalonians. He is saying it to the gathered group of all of them. So all of you have to rejoice always. All of you have to pray without ceasing. All of you have to give thanks in all circumstances. Is it possible for all of us at all times to be thankful and rejoicing? It is hard work. But if it's all of us, then yes, it is possible. Right? As an individual, I can't say that I'm always going to be rejoicing, that I'm always going to be thankful, that I'm always going to be praying. But all of us can always be rejoicing. We can always be praying. We can always be giving thanks in all circumstances. Because if one of us can't, the rest of us can be there for that other. If one of us can't rejoice, the others of us that are gathered can gather around that person and lift them up and rejoice for them. Give a prayer for them and to help them understand what it is to be thankful. Right? Because who actually does the rejoicing, the praying, and the giving of thanks? I got each individual. Jesus. What? Us. People. May God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful and he will do this. Again, I'm old and half deaf. The Spirit moves you, you, right? Jesus is actually a really good answer. Um, It's the Spirit that does this within us. Right? It's the Spirit if we allow God to work in and through us. And even if we don't allow God to work in and through us, the Spirit still has movement in our lives. The Spirit is the one that makes the mountains and hills low. And brings the valleys high. And makes the rough places plain. And makes everything be level. It's the Spirit that gives us the power to do these things. It's the Spirit that calls us and sanctifies us. And gives us the understanding of who God is. It's what Martin Luther said. Right? I've said this before. Does anybody else know it? Before I say it. Martin Luther said about the Holy Spirit. In the third article of the Apostles' Creed. That I cannot believe in God except through the power of the Holy Spirit. I cannot possibly believe in God unless the Holy Spirit works in my life to help me understand who God is in my life. So as a gathered community, as we await the coming of our Lord, let us rejoice always, pray without ceasing, And give thanks in all circumstances. 
as a united body of Christ, called together by His Spirit, sanctified through Him, and sent out into the world to help everybody see the hope that is coming through the love that each and every one of us gets in Jesus. And hold tight to the promise that Paul says to the Thessalonians, that he said he's going to do it, and he's going to. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do all of these things. So don't quench the Spirit, but allow God to work in and through your lives to show all of this world what this season of our waiting is actually all about. The coming of our Lord.